Good afternoon, Parramatta. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm going to tell you a story about Jesus. And today I'm going to be talking about salt and light. I'm going to be reading from Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Here it goes. This is the word of God. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It says, It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. It says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a, a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So that's the word of God. Now I want you to know this, that's talking about our responsibility to be salt and light in this world. And so people, I can tell you, uh, there's something that is unknown to many people, but I minister a lot to Aboriginal people, and what they do, they actually watch Christians to see if they really are Christians. And so, and don't worry, they're watching you and you need to live a life of righteousness for them to take any notice of you. And so, street people are like this as well. Hear people praising the Lord, doing all these things, but not being salt and light in the world. And so those people that are sleeping rough, um, and so they're pushed from pillar to post, these people. And so these, if you've experienced how cold it is out in the open of a night at the moment, you wouldn't want to be sleeping rough, I can tell you. It's because there's a man over here, that wind whistling through, he must be perishingly cold. And so we need to look after these people because you don't want to be there yourself. So they need to have somewhere uh, for them to go when they need this help. And so what happens is the church needs to lead by example. And so if you lock up your churches, so this church here is empty all night, it should be open all night for people to wander in. Wouldn't matter if they stole all the pews and everything else. It's the most important thing is to be salt and light in the community. And so how can we lead by example if you lock people out? It's the same with toilets. When I went to Amsterdam, it was a, a city of sin, and they actually had no toilets available, and people were urinating in the street in the middle of the day because the government in Amsterdam, they closed all these facilities. You couldn't even get a drink of water but the beauty of here in Parramatta, they've got taps where you can drink. They do have toilets that you can go to during the day, but they lock the toilets overnight, and they shouldn't do this. So it's about time that the council in Parramatta do something, but they have to be shown how error-prone they are. The church has to lead first. So come on, Anglicans, open your doors, let the people come in, sleep there, doesn't matter whether you've got them uh, clean the place out every day. I know that you've got people in your church there who are willing to supervise these people of a night. And so we do have many friends in this city. They are Anglicans as well. And so do something, church. And so you might say, what would Jesus do about these street people? He would certainly look after them and he wouldn't leave them out in the cold.
The Bible also said, in the same section of the Bible in Matthew, it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And so, when you open the doors and help people in their time of need, it's showing mercy to the underprivileged, and God sees everything that you do. So if you can call yourself a Christian church, open your doors, let the people come in, let them come in out of the cold, and feed them. And so you've got plenty of money. If the Catholic Church has got billions of dollars, they should be doing the same. I venture to say that some of them do, but most of them don't. And I say to you today, do something about it before it's too late, because the eyes of the Lord are upon you. And what the Bible tells us, there are fat sheep and lean sheep. And also, that's what talks in Ezekiel, it talks about the fat sheep are going to be judged. And so you're, you're prancing around with all the money in your pockets and you're not doing the Lord's work with your money, you're going to be judged, I can tell you. So you've got uh, everything in front of you to do. So start doing it today. And uh, the most important thing is you're supposed to be working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, I want you to know this, is that you need to check out yourself and, and what I'm going to tell you now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is very simple, where it says in John 3:16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whomsoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Also, Jesus said, and he was stressing this point because he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, that means I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. And also, he says, you cannot enter. So this is your passport to heaven. So if you don't uh, make sure that you're born again, it is uh, an ill-conceived teaching in most of the churches this day. The devil's got in, fiddled with the, uh, the gospel. But I can tell you, the whole church needs to be changed. If you don't want all these lovely people who are professing faith in Jesus to be left behind, the last thing you would want to do is to be left behind. Uh, it's a time of great stress in this world. You don't need to be under that stress when it's open to you to be with Jesus. And so that's what we're looking for in Jesus' name. So the last thing I'm going to say to you, it's about repentance. And what happens when you do, because the Bible says for, uh, God is faithful to forgive. If you repent, he will deliver you from all unrighteousness. So that's what we need to do. We need to repent. We need to uh, ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you're safe because the Holy Spirit goes into your heart, will not leave you. It says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so we're looking for this comfort and because he is the comforter mm -hmm. <laughs> he's the spirit of truth amen and the holy spirit will lead you to all righteousness and he teaches you everything so don't neglect your salvation and come to the lord in in expectation that you're going to be uh, included with the saints in heaven so god bless you all thank you god bless